be something in you that's capable of producing joy. Have you ever had people look really, seem really thrilled to be around you, but you weren't feeling happy at all? <laughs> but they was like, so glad to see you, and you were one step away from jumping off the top of a building. <laughs> oh, I'm just so happy to see you. I enjoy you so much. You're so much fun to be with. And, and so if there's something in you, <laughs> I love that. If joy is in you, obviously because somebody was really turned on by you. You know, you've been somebody been really turned on by you and you go, why? <laughs> <laughs> if it's in you and obviously can produce joy because they're happy, then it says you must be dissociating it in yourself. One paragraph of Course in Miracles, you get still one paragraph and you would like have it all together. I'll say that again until we hear it. I'll say it again. Okay. How do you become aware of God, of Holy Spirit, of peace, of joy, of power, of prosperity, of abundance, of everything that you say you want? How do you become aware of it unless you start to see the effects of it in your life? How am I going to be aware of something that I've never seen the results of? How am I going to be aware of something that I never see the results of? So I keep hearing about God, so how am I going to know about God unless I see some effect of God right. in my life? And then now we've been heard that the unlimited power basically is invisible, so how can you perceive the spirit at all? How do you perceive the spirit at all? Well, it says again, if you inspire joys and other, joy in others and other, people's, other people are really experiencing joy in your presence, then there must be something in you that's capable of creating joy, but you are not letting yourself feel it. So every, I'm letting everybody else feel that which is in me that can produce joy. But you know who I'm leaving out of the mix? <laughs> me! The part of me that can produce joy, fulfillment, and happiness and abundance for me, I'm dissociating from it, which the course defines dissociating as basically choosing not to know. I'm choosing not to know the part of me that produces joy in me for me. I'm choosing not to know the part of me that makes me happy. I'm choosing not to know the part of me that makes me happy. I'm choosing not to know the part of me that makes me happy. I'm choosing not to know the part of me, even though it seems to be inspiring so much joy in so many other people around me who seem genuinely happy to be in my presence and feel like I am inspiring them in some way, but I'm not letting me inspire me the way I'm inspiring them. Any questions about that? <laughs> everybody clear about everybody got any questions about what the first paragraph is saying? If other people can be inspired by you, but you are, are not experiencing joy, that's you choosing not to be inspired by you. The error I made was I looked for someone else to inspire me all the time. I was convinced that I was going to find the right person. Everybody heard of the right person? <laughs> this person, this, this person, when I met them, they were going to inspire joy in me continuously all the time, nonstop, in ways I define. Do <laughs> you hear that last part I said? In ways I define. The truth is, if anybody can feel good around you, if anybody can feel inspired around you, but you feel unhappy right now, you're just choosing not to tap into the same thing that you're allowing them to tap into and they're seeing in you. Why? Exactly. Yeah. Why? Why is it that you think you would not let yourself feel it? Because you have decided to not experience joy. Why? Because I don't believe I deserve it. Why? Because of what I was taught and how, I was, how I've been programmed and the experiences that I've had since the day that I was born. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You and I perceive what we've learned and we experience what we've learned and we act on what we've learned and we've learned to believe in guilt. We've learned to believe in sin. We've learned to believe that we're separate. We've learned sometimes to believe in the punishing God. We've learned to believe that we're a bunch of different people coming together in this room, <laughs> listening to the strange guy, agreeing or not agreeing, seeing what's the same thing, thinking he got sense and I got sense. You know, because you know, unless you say what I'm saying is right, it could possibly be right. Right? Because you're the arbiter of what's real. So when you say I'm valid, I'm valid. And when you say what I say is true, it's true. Right? You're the arbiter of reality. Things couldn't possibly be the way. You didn't decide they are. So then we become the judge. Then we sit back and we decide what's true based on our past learning, which might be wrong as hell. 
How do you know it might be wrong? How do you know it may be wrong? How do you know it may be wrong? You're not exactly the happiest kid on the block. It's not really deep. If you're miserable and unhappy and afraid and unfriendly and can't connect and can't love, your learning sucks. <laughs> it has not brought you in. And, 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 and as men, we must be tough. We must present the front of no one can reach me, you know, <laughs> because I'm here, I'm the main arbiter. I am the man. So a lot of times, sometimes, you know, women will come and their mates will come just to judge whether or not I'm for real because as a man, they, she doesn't have sense enough to judge for herself. So he's got to come and tell her what's valid or not, you know, that's what we men do. You know. And do you know what? If I say something that makes her do more of what he would like, I'm a good teacher. If I say something that makes her maybe not go along with his program, I'm a cult leader and you need to get away from me. And that's the way the court says most of us judge anything that anybody learns that we are in a special relationship with. If it brings them closer to my agenda, it's a good teacher. If it moves them away from my agenda, this is not a very good teacher. You should not go there anymore. That's the way specialness operates. You, it, it, it's all about me. Oh. I be, you know, as a counselor, I very seldom meet people who come, into me, come to me for a session that wants a relationship and say something like, I have love to give, compassion to give, forgiveness to give, support to give. I would like to find someone I could give that to. <laughs> it's usually, I would like this kind of person, that kind of person, and this is the qualities <laughs> I would like them to have, and this is what I'd like for them to do for me, and this is what they're supposed to give me. Can you help me with that? <laughs> You know? Yeah. And then some people are blessed enough and love themselves enough and know about the joy and inspiration in themselves enough to be in a relationship of some type with someone and actually appreciate them, recognize the blessing that they are to them, and actually let them know through touch, word, deed, thought, action. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I think the luckiest, most fortunate person in the world <laughs> is a person who can love what they have and who they have and what they have. Yeah. And then let it know it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Woo! Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, so first paragraph. What is the point of the first paragraph? How do I become aware of something? The effects of it. Yeah. If I can make somebody else, if it looks like somebody else, notice the word was inspired. If I can inspire joy in others, but I don't feel that way myself, what am I doing? Dissociating. I'm dissociating it in myself. And so the Course in Miracles then says, okay, any questions or the comments before I go to the next paragraph? This is a course class, so I, I have this crazy habit of actually using the course book. I know it's a radical concept, but <laughs> I do it. You, you find that most course classes don't use the book. They say one sentence and then it's, it's it. But I want to go deep. I want to remember. Me too. Don't you? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Take, take a breath just for a second. Now, it seems to you that the Holy Spirit doesn't produce joy consistently in you. It seems to you that God doesn't consistently make you happy. Truth doesn't consistently make you happy. Only, uh-oh, here's the reason why. Yeah. Why is it that it looks like God doesn't work in me, love doesn't work in me, joy isn't always working in me? The Course says, because you do not consistently arouse. You don't get aroused enough. You have aroused deficiency. When was the last time you were aroused? Is it that long? <laughs> I never seen so many blank faces in my life. I never seen so many blank faces. I went, I went to the rouse and I went. It's been too long. And what kind of aroused? In joy. Yeah. joy. It says arouse joy. Do you arouse joy in others? Do you arouse joy in others? It says the reason why it seems like life doesn't arouse joy in you is because you don't arouse any joy in anybody else. So I'm expecting everybody else to arouse me. I don't get up saying, how can I arouse? And the part of me that doesn't love me always wants me to try to arouse somebody that don't want to be aroused by me. 
So I'm always after the arousal that can never come. It's the stupidest game I've ever played with myself. It's that constantly wanting who or what did not want me. It wasn't available for me. It wasn't open to me. It was amazing how much my relationships improved as far as satisfaction when I started wanting women that wanted me. And I wanted them and they wanted me. And I wanted them and they wanted me. And I wanted them and they wanted me. And then I would, then it became the ones who didn't want me. I realized that was the one I shouldn't want. <laughs> I got lucky so much more. <laughs> Peacefully, easily, without guilt, without fear. Nobody's going to hold you responsible for something that they experienced with you when they know they wanted it as much as you do, but somebody you convinced sure will blame you one day. You promise me. How do you know who wants you? They show you. You know of joy by its effects. You know of love by its effects. You know of love by its effects. It would be a lot easier if I wanted to go on a date with somebody in here to say, who in the room would like to go on a date with me? Let me know after class. <laughs> 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 then it would be for me to try to find out who in the room would like to have a date with me. <laughs> Ask. <Yeah>. Ask. <laughs> and ye shall receive. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So... <laughs> The reason why it looks like God isn't arousing joy in me is because I'm not consistently arousing joy in others. And then to take this next sentence out and see if y'all can figure this one out. It says, their reactions to you, another person's reactions to you, another person's reactions to you are your evaluation of God's consistency. In other words, when people are in my life and I'm experiencing a lot of joy with them, I have a tendency to believe that God is really blessing me. I, in other words, I judge my creator's blessing by how much joy I'm seeing exchanged with the people in, the, in my reality. Do you do that? So if, you, like, if everything is going pretty cool and you're receiving a lot of love and joy and happiness, you, you tend to say, you don't feel like, you know, God's really looking out for me. The creator is really here for me. So the course is saying that's the way it works. You will believe God is operating in your life only to the degree to which you allow joy to be in your life. And then he just told you, well, how do you do that? Well, you need to start arousing some people. <laughs> in what? Joy. It's joy arousal. 